Welcome back to the Pink Floyd Collectors YouTube channel. Today I thought we'd look at the new release from Aubrey Powell. It's a book entitled Through the Prism, Untold Rock Stories from the Hypnosis Archive. For those of you that don't know, Aubrey Powell, or as he was called Poe back then, formed the company Hypnosis in 1968 with Storm Ferguson. And one of their first jobs was coming up with the uh, Source Full of Secrets LP. Uh, both of them were from Cambridge and very much in the clique of the whole Pink Floyd group. Uh, Storm knew Sid very well and he goes on to discuss that. Um, so just first of all, uh, a little bit of a talk about the, the look and feel of the book. The front cover and the rear cover are very thick, um, so it gives the book a very solid feel. Um, as you can see, they've gone very heavy on the dark side of the moon prism. Uh, hence the title Through the Prism. Uh, Hypnosis went on to do covers for Peter Gabriel, Paul McCartney, uh, Genesis as well, uh, Led Zeppelin famously. So this book doesn't just deal with his experiences with Pink Floyd, it goes on to talk about uh, those experiences as well. Uh, but certainly the beginning of the book uh, deals very much with what he calls the laying ghosts arrests um, and it puts a few stories that have been myths uh, to bed in terms of the whole Sid Barrett story of being locked in a cupboard he actually confirms what exactly happened with that I'm not going to give too many uh, spoilers here um, but he certainly gives his account and explains why some of the myths and legends came up around Sid <clears throat> but he knew Sid very well and he saw him kind of slip into his illness as he describes it. Um, and that's really the first pages, uh, first 20 odd pages are all about him growing up. There's the map, for those of you that have been to the exhibition will be a little bit familiar with this. It's a, a street plan guide to Pink Floyd's Cambridge and then the red dots all signify places of importance from David Gilmore's house to Roger Waters' house to a couple of addresses associated with Sid Barrett. Um, so this is like a standard map from the time and they've just co-opt it uh, for Pink Floyd purposes. So yeah, the whole first part of the book deals with his relationship with Sid. Interestingly, it was Sid who even came up with the name Hypnosis. Um, hip was quite a word back in the uh, mid-60s. And if something was hip, it was cool. Um, and that's explained here as well. Then it does, after the success, of course, uh, Hypnosis had with Source of Fellow Secrets, that they were then in demand with bands like Led Zeppelin, and they did get a bit of a reputation. And they obviously did the Amagama sleeve and uh, medal for Pink Floyd, which isn't really so much to, uh, touched on here, but they, they certainly go into a lot of detail about Dark Side of the Moon. Uh, how and why they chose what they did. He's even dug out the original textbook here that the album was based on, uh, Light and Colour. So even and again, these were featured at the exhibition. These are the original uh, drawings um, that were kind of coming up with how the art sleeves would look. And I think the band were presented with a whole bunch, but they all took to the pyramid and the, the spectrum design. Um, and again, then it dips into other groups. Uh, then the next time we come into uh, Pink Floyd is really with animals. Uh, oh, it would be Wish You Were Here, actually. Um, so Wish You Were Here, uh, he goes on about being sent out uh, to America to film at uh, uh, Lake Como, is it, or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it describes the whole trip. The, the book does talk about his kind of falling out, if you like, with Storm over years. Obviously, they worked very closely. Um, there's unreleased photos here from the Wish You Were Here uh, photo shoot. Yeah, he does deal with his falling out over time with Storm. He also talks about, I think the next Floyd part here is obviously about animals and how Poe and Roger kind of looked at the concept and how it was a Roger concept. But then Storm kind of took it as his own and Roger took exception to that. And that was the kind of end of uh, hypnosis working with Pink Floyd, certainly while Roger Waters was there. Um, although it does detail here that Poe and Roger 
did remain friends. It was never a problem for them. And actually, Roger called on Poe to help him with the uh, Free Assange uh, pig that was launched in London a few years back. Uh, the end of the book uh, goes back to Floyd territory, and that's with David Gilmore uh, using Poe. There was a kind of agreement after Storm died, uh, because Storm Studios were taking care of Pink Floyd, that the next person in line, if you like, was Poe. So he was then taken on board by David Gilmore to look at all Pink Floyd re-releases after Storm's death and actually his own tour. Uh, but it does deal with that there was even a falling out between David and Poe over some miscommunication, uh, as tends to be the case. And there was even these, these diagrams here show that there was the talk of a double album that was going to be made around the uh, Their Mortal Remains exhibition, which... Obviously, Poe had quite a big hand in. He was like the direct art director, even coming up with the idea of entering through the Bedford van at the London exhibition. And you can see here the uh, early years box set. He had some quite creative ideas for how the box should look. Um, but yeah, plenty of text here. Uh, if you're a Pink Floyd fan, don't worry about the fact that this does deal with some Led Zeppelin stuff, some Genesis stuff. There's plenty in here for the Pink Floyd connoisseur. Plenty of stuff that you've probably heard bits of it maybe before, but this is really coming from the horse's mouth. And uh, I guess you have to believe from Aubrey Powell's perspective, this is what happens and it's his truth. Uh, I found it very enjoyable, very good book. It's not a challenging read at all. You can read it very quickly. Uh, but yeah, 100% recommend it. Hope you found that useful.